has only one square that it, that it can move to and still be safe. That's E8. Normally, earlier on in this uh, ending, we would have pushed the king forward. So if you didn't think about this, you might have pushed the king onto F7 and therefore covering the E8 square. Do you know that that would end the game and it wouldn't be your win, it would be a stalemate, it would be a draw. So once you've achieved the standard formation on the sixth rank, you need to really stop and think now about which square your opponent's king is going to be able to move to until we can force them into the corner. So the first move that we make is just to retreat the black squared bishop onto e5 and so that the squares to the left of the black king are controlled by your bishops. The e7 square is covered by your king and therefore the black king has only one square to go to and that is e8. Now the procedure here is to try to cover the square that the king has just moved out of. So we'll move the black squared bishop again and this time we'll put it on c7 and that stops the black king from coming back to d8 and we'll have the king will then have only one square to go to and that's f8. Now we need to try to cover the square that has just come away from so covering e8 the move is for the bishop to go to d7. The black king still has only one square to go to, and so he moves on to g8. Can you see that h7, which is colored red, is a flight an escape square for that king, the black king, and so we need now to move our king across to g6 to cover h7. Therefore, the king is now trapped. The white king, our king, covers all three squares in front of the black king, the king either goes to the corner or it goes to f8 and the black king knows that going into the corner is not a good idea. So he comes to f8, that's a black square. We can now use our black squared bishop and move it to d6 and this will attack the black king, that's check. The black king has only one square to go to so he moves to g8, that's a white square. So let's bring our white squared bishop to e6, that's check. The king can't go back to f8 and now has only one square to go to and that's h8. Can you see what you would do now? Haven't left you a lot to think about but the black king is on a black square and quite right. Move your black square bishop to e5 to attack the king. That's check and checkmate. Ask yourself the three questions before you agree it's checkmate. Can you take the piece that's causing the check? Well, no, the bishop is too far away. Can you block the check? No, you have no other pieces to go in the way. Can you move your king to a safe square? I'm afraid not. Our king and our two bishops are positioned very well to cover all of the flight squares for the black king. So that is definitely check and checkmate. One of the things that you have to think about at the towards the end of the game is when you stop and you look and you think, oh yes, I've got the power to win this, you must be careful not to play without thinking about what your opponent's going to do. In some of my beginner classes, our young players would take rook and say, let's take the knight without even thinking. Let's have a look and see what happens when that occurs. You've got the knight in your pocket, it's king and rook against a king, but it's black's turn to move. Where is that black king going to go? It can't go to g8 because it'll be checked by the rook, and similarly it can't go to h7 because it'll be checked by the rook. But is the king, the black king, is it in check? No, it's not, and it has no move to go. Therefore, this is a stalemate. And you need to remember that if you are not in check, 
you are not in checkmate. This is a stalemate. White made a mistake by taking that knight and therefore it's a draw. Half a point each. Let's look at this position again. If the black king was in the middle of the board, it would be a draw. White could not force a win. But the black king is in the corner and your king, our king, is very much closer to it. We have a way to win here. Let's study this and see what we can do. First of all, we need to notice that the king has two squares, the black king has two squares to go to, g8 and h7. So by moving our king onto f7, that cuts off g8, and now the black king has only one square to go to, and they'll go to h7. Now we take our rook and we put it on h1, and that is check. Three questions when you're in check. Can you take the piece that's causing the check? No, the rook is too far away. Can you block the check? Yes, I can put my knight on h5. Third question, can I move my king to a safe square? No. So again, black has no choice but to move the knight from g7 to h5. What would you be wanting to do now? Rook takes the knight on h5. That's check. Three questions for black. Can I take the piece causing the check? No, the rook is too far away. Can I block? I haven't got any pieces to block now. Can I move to a safe square? No, afraid not. So that's check and mate for white. You have the power, and if you learn this ending, you have the skill. Let's look at this ending. It's white to move. Queen against a pawn. You're probably thinking, white's going to win. I have the power to win. But do you have the skills? If you're a beginner chess player, you would just be too greedy and take the pawn on g6. It's not necessary to take pieces all the time. Look what happens if you're too quick and you take this one. Where is the black king going to move? The three flight squares, g7, g8 and h7, are all now covered by the queen. So the king can't move. Is the black king in check? No, it's on a safe square. If you're on a safe square and you've got no other square to move to, no other pieces to move, then the game is stalemate. You made it a draw. So king and queen, you had the power, but this player didn't have the skill. Let's look further. When you've decided that you have the power to win, you must spend time thinking about how you're going to do it. Remember, we've already just said, don't be greedy and take the pawn. You need to look at your opponent's move after you've made your move. So the first correct move in this position is to move your queen up to b7. And the yellow arrow shows you that the queen is now controlling all of those squares on the seventh rank. The king can't come off of the eighth rank onto the seventh. So black decides, well, I better see if I can push the pawn on. Now you leave your queen where it is. It's fixed now until the very last move. So your king starts a journey. Black pawn goes on. We must stop this black pawn getting through to g1. We don't want it to become a queen. So our white king goes on to g3 to block the pawn moving forward and therefore black has only one move to make and that's king to g8. 
This time you can take the black pawn because the black king has more than uh, one square to move to and it won't be a stalemate. So the black king chooses to come away from the corner this time and do you remember how we did checkmates with king and queen? Well, you know that you need to have your king close to the opponent's king. So the black king goes there and the white king moves on to e6 and the black king will go to d8 and now can you ask yourself the questions about uh, your thinking about checkmate Right, now you must begin to recognize this position as being very close to a checkmate, so you need to consider your moves. Remember, you do not want to leave the king in a stalemate position. So let me see. I can see two squares that I could move my queen to where it would be checkmate. The usual square would be to put your queen directly in front of the king, and this is check and it covers all of the escape squares for the black king can the black king take the white queen no because your white king is right there protecting it and you need to do that if you're going to put your queen next to uh, your opponent's king you need to have at least one of your pieces protecting it otherwise the opponent's king will simply take your queen off the board and how many times have I seen that in my lessons? Black has just taken one of your pieces and left you with a bishop. So let's get on and see if we can win this. Right, bishop goes to d3, check. Black king moves away. Okay, we know we're going to need our king to help us, so on goes the king. Black king goes g7. White king, we, need, we know we need to be close to this other king if we have any chance of getting a checkmate. Ah, now the king, black king has gone into the corner. It's on a black square, and I can tell you now that there's no way that the white king, um, or the bishop there, can force the king off of that black corner square because the white bishop only attacks white squares and the and the king can never uh, go next to another king so you can't give a check with, uh, with with your king against another king so this if you end up with a king and a bishop you can stop playing it's a draw as with a single bishop where it wasn't possible to force a checkmate it's also not possible to win the game if you only have a single knight. But let's watch a few moves and see what happens. The knight can move to f3 and that will check the king. Let's just watch and see what happens here. Well, the king starts the journey. The black king is heading for the corner again. In this case, a very safe place to be. But even if it was out in the middle of the board, it would still be... Uh, not or would not be possible to get a checkmate and if you're not very careful knight on g5 stops the one flight square that the black king had what's the result of this game yes it's a stalemate the black king has nowhere to move and it's on a safe square if it's not check it's not checkmate. Now we have two knights. I have to tell you it's still not possible to force a checkmate unless the your opponent makes a mistake with his king. We want to keep the pieces working together as teamwork as we did with two bishops so let's watch and see how it proceeds. Black King is helping by going towards the corner. And we're making our two knights. 
and also our king working together as a team trying to cover as many of the flight squares as possible the king has a job to do to stop the opponent's king coming away and into the middle Uh, we have the king in the corner. Do you think we have a check here? Yes, we have a check. And now black has to make a decision. It was safe before to go into the corner. In this end game, it's a mistake. If the king, black king, goes to a8, can you see where the checkmate move would be? It would be knight moving to c7, and that would be check and mate, because the two flight squares from the corner, b8 is covered by the knight on d7, and the flight square to a7 is covered by our king on b6. So going into the corner for the black king would be a mistake. Fortunately for black, there's one more square it can go to, and that's c8. And once it's come away from the corner, it's not possible to get a check mate. So two knights against a lone king, you can stop. It's a draw. Let's see what happens at the uh, beginning of, of our game. Uh, white plays and the first move is uh, pawn to e4. Good move. Black responds. Excellent. Remember, we need to move pieces out towards the middle. This is great. White knight now attacking that pawn on uh, e5. Black notices that the attack is there from white, so defends by bringing one of its pieces, the knight, out uh, to defend that pawn in the middle. And white thinks, or perhaps doesn't think, and decides to take the pawn. Good move or bad move? What do you think? got one point in your pocket not a good move because black was defending it and the black knight now takes the white knight and black now has three points uh, in their pocket so you've won one point but you've lost three not a good idea okay bishop out is got to be a good move ah but not if the black knight had taken the pawn now the black knight is able to capture this bishop, which would normally be on a good square, but nothing's defending it. And so the black knight takes the white bishop, and you've lost a piece for nothing at all. Too quick a move, I think. From the previous game that we were looking at, uh, Black had made two captures and had got themselves uh, well ahead in the game and would then have gone on to win. Let's look and see here what we can do for White. You need to look to see if you are attacking any undefended pieces of your opponent. Can you see something here now? Yes, although a long way, long diagonal, that bishop is attacking black's rook on h8. And it goes all the way across the board, captures uh, the black rook. And now with a bishop and three pawns against three pawns, uh, white is now in a uh, winning, has a winning advantage and should now be able to go right on and uh, win the game. To win this position after you've taken the rook, uh, you need to make use of your king. 
and uh, you can follow the red arrow. You can see the moves that the king can take to get across the other side of the board and attack those black pawns. Looking at captures for white, you can see that white attacks both the undefended pawn and the undefended knight. Remember the different values of pieces. A pawn is worth one point, a knight is worth three points. In this case, it's uh, better that you should be taking the higher valued piece. So rook takes knight is the correct move and that will give white a winning uh, position now. Yes, you can see the on this board that uh, white has noticed that they can capture the black pawn with, uh, with their knight. And what chess players have to learn is that uh, you don't always take the first piece you can see. See it, remember that move, but just look and see if there's a better move. Yeah. Uh, the knight uh, can move to e5, and this is a much better move because uh, the black king is in check and they have to move the king to get out of check. And once that's uh, happened, then the knight goes forward and captures the undefended uh, rook. And when it, uh, the knight takes the rook, and that's check again, and oh look, you're now attacking that undefended pawn. So check with a king, attacking an undefended piece uh, must always be a good move. You'll slowly go ahead in the game getting more points and this is now going to be a winning position for white and if you look at the red arrow you can see that to remind you that the king has to come forward now to help protect that pawn as it goes through to become a queen. In our previous position we saw a knight attacking the king and a rook and if one of our pieces attacks more than one of our opponent's pieces that's called a tactic uh, which is a fork. The special name of that tactic is a fork. We'll be talking more about uh, tactical moves in our uh, next DVD. So let's uh, consider this uh, much more complicated position. I'd like you to look particularly at the square d5. That is a, a focus of attack for both white and black. And can you count how many pieces white has which are attacking that focus square d5? Can you see that there are five pieces that white has attacking d5? And if you now look at black, position you'll see that there are only four pieces attacking or defending that focus square d5. If we have five pieces attacking a square and our opponent has only four that means that we are winning the attack and it is usually safe to continue. So let's see what happens as we first of all take the pawn. Black can continue by taking back we can continue by taking again and black. So here we go, each side swapping off. Remembering we had five pieces attacking that square. Black had only four. And we will end up taking that rook and white is now in the winning position. Can you see the two pawns on both the uh, a file and the B file. They're now open in space in front of them. They will be able to march on to the other side of the board and one of them will promote to a queen. Uh, we need to just make sure that they have a bit of support 
um, so that that black knight doesn't cause any damage and we do that by marching our king along and you can see the red arrows there where the king will get over to support the white pawns going through uh, to soon become a queen and therefore win the game. Let's look at this uh, more complicated position. Look particularly at the square d5. This is the focus of attack for both white and black. White's turn to move. Count the number of pieces that white has that are attacking uh, d5. That's our focus square. Hopefully you can see that there are five white pieces attacking that square. Now count for black and you'll see that black has only four pieces. So if we have five pieces attacking one square and our opponent has four pieces, we're winning the attack and this is a good time to proceed to swap off. So let's see what happens. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And there we go, still the same. Rook takes, rook takes, rook takes. See, white always has this one extra piece here in the exchange. And now because white has two pawns unopposed on the A file and B file, this is a good time to swap off uh, the two remaining pieces. And let's see how strong these two pawns can be. One of them is going to get through uh, to uh, promote to a queen. So the black king does its best to get over in front of the pawns. If you want to stop a pawn from promoting, you need to get your king in front of the marching pawns. See how the two pawns work together? The B pawn is protecting the A pawn. Black king can't take. Black makes a quick decision to take the B pawn, and this was a mistake because that now releases the A pawn, and the black king can't get close enough to catch it. And there we go, pawn to A8, promote that to a queen, and we can... We can win quite easily we know king and queen against a king we have the power and from our earlier lessons on this DVD you have the skills to win this game. Both directly and indirectly for example when the pawn on e4 has taken uh, on d5 that brings into play the bishop on g2 which will then be attacking that focus square of d5. Can you see that black has only six pieces attacking the focus square d5? And if all the captures take place, white will be in a winning position. Let's see how this might happen. You should consider every time um, but after your opponent has taken one of your pieces, you do need to just spend a moment and think about whether you should continue the sequence of captures, because at some point you shouldn't do that. Black just continued and carried on, and they lost a queen unnecessarily. And queen and bishop against a knight is a very easy win for white. When you write your moves down, you can not only go through the game with your opponent, but if it was a particularly good game, um, you might want to show this to your parents, or if you're lucky enough, you may want to, uh, to have a coach with you. You may want to show your coach the moves. And in fact, even if it's not a good game, you should still want to show it to your coach. They should be able to look at it and help you uh, to show you some moves that you couldn't find at your, your
So g writing your moves down, going through the games, really important part of becoming a good, a better Parents, you're, uh, you have a very important role uh, in the uh, development of your uh, child's chess skills. You, obviously, they can't go to the tournament uh, without you, and, and you need to make the arrangements so that you get there at a tournament early enough so the child can be calm and relaxed and, and have time to think and focus about what they're going to do uh, in, in their, their game. Um, so often I've seen uh, parents and children just arriving at the very last minute and sometimes a little bit late and they come into the tournament hall to sit down and uh, play their game and they're all just just so rushed that they can't think properly and play their best moves. So parents, you need to just try to organise that um, for When they finish their game and they've come out, uh, they need you to be there to encourage them, to be positive about uh, what they've done. And, you know, you, you need to, I'm sort of telling people uh, that I teach that often you can play a thousand games before you actually begin to really know what you're doing and, and be fortunate enough to win your games. So, you know, if they come out and they haven't won it, you need to just be there for them and encourage them and tell them that they need to, as long as they've tried their best um, and they go back in the next uh, game and they will do better. First of all, I'm, I'm often saying to, to parents that uh, you know, a good thing is for their child just to play a longer game. So if they've played their first game and they've come out and it's only lasted five or six minutes, they should go back in and the next time should last 10 minutes or 15 minutes or even longer. Each time make the game last a little bit longer and they'll do that if they're actually thinking particularly um, about their opponent's move. Parents, you're, you need to um, pay attention to your, your child's welfare and when uh, your child's finished their game and they come back to you uh, after they've had a chance to, uh, to go through their moves and to, to show you their game, um, do make sure that you give them something to drink. This will uh, make them stronger and uh, better for their, for their future games. When, um, if they have a, a, a short game, perhaps they'll have time enough to get them outside uh, to get some fresh air and a running around activity. Um, but you need to make sure that they finish that activity and they get back into uh, the, the playing area uh, in good time so that they are focused and ready to start their next game. Between tournaments, there are still many things that you can be doing uh, to improve your chess. One of the things, of course, is playing on the internet. It's a, a huge area where you can get a lot of information, uh, a number of programs where you can play games, where you can be coached online, and you can buy and download games uh, that you can play and improve your practice. Uh, most chess players who aspire to be good players will be practicing uh, quite regularly and if you can find just 10 to 15 minutes a day to start with uh, that's a really good practice time and you'll be amazed how improved your chess will become um, after just a very few weeks.
Um, I hope the most important thing is that when you play your game of chess, um, that uh, you enjoy the game. Whatever the result, enjoy the game. Learn something from it. I hope now as we come to the end of our time together that uh, the lessons have helped you and that your chess is now going to get better. If you would like to give any uh, feedback or questions to us then, then please email those comments to me and we will look at them and perhaps they'll help us with the next uh, DVD. I now wish you very good luck and I look forward to spending some more time with you uh, on our next DVD. Thank you so much for your time and listening here.